I do not. I would just like to say that thank you to all of our community organizations that are doing a really nice job of getting in their community event applications in a timely manner so that we can do a first and second reading on them. Yeah. So thank you to the Chamber and to the Alpha Family Center and to the Ren Fair and to everybody that's doing that and getting them in on a timely fashion. And I know the ham radio. The ham radio folks. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Oates, do you have any further? I've covered the ones I had. Mr. Um, I just have a quick question, and it's just really about the format of the agenda. And perhaps I, it's just me, but I thought the approval of the checks, which here is listed as B, and the approval of the minutes were previously contained in the consent agenda. Is that? Yeah, those are still the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, but then there's a C through I, which I think we would talk about and would not be covered in the consent agenda. He moved them to yeah, the consent these, agenda. These are all considered consent agenda items. Yeah. Um, unless you um, ask them to be otherwise. Unless somebody has questions about this. Oh. So okay. we're, we're kind 
kind of not doing that, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying. Okay, very good. <laughs> Mainly to speed up the meeting so we're not... Time tonight. for, I would like to hear from the gentleman about the same radio. That was my next question. Uh, Mr. Uh, would you please address the board and explain to us what you plan on doing? Well, name and, uh, and address if you would, please. I'm Henry Grebe. Um, I'm amateur radio operator N8XX, federally licensed. I belong to the Grand Rapids Amateur Radio Association, which supports uh, the Red Cross in this area. It's, I don't remember how many counties, but it, it uh, helps with any time we're needed. Uh, we also do all sorts of odd jobs for them because we don't have very many communications emergencies. Um, every year we have a 24-hour test of amateur radio communications uh, where we go out and set up a station which is uh, independent of commercial electricity. It is also, uh, uh, as we try to contact as many stations throughout the uh, continental United States and Canada that are similarly set up, they are about nine or ten thousand stations like this set up. We've operated this, as far as I can tell, way back before about 1950 or so at various places. Um, the amateur radio is uh, licensed by uh, the Federal Communications Commission. It is considered in the public interest, convenience, or necessity the acronym is PICON. Um, we plan to set up on uh, Saturday morning, uh, starting about 9 o'clock, and the, the test runs between 2 p.m. on Saturday through till 2 p.m. on Sunday, and we'll tear the things apart, hopefully make it uh, very nice and, and pristine like it was when it started out. Um, it, we will have banners that uh, describe amateur radio. We will have a booth that tells about amateur radio, try to get people in, involved more in amateur radio. One thing we do on a routine basis is uh, assist the Weather Bureau because there are all sorts of weather fronts that come across the Great Lakes and impact us. I guess the last one was a tornado that hit south of here near Alto. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather net is, fires up on amateur radio frequencies and helps with uh, telling where the bad weather is coming actually because the Weather Bureau says they can tell by radar what's happening 10,000 feet up, but they can't tell what's happening on the ground. And if we have people in the area, they can tell uh, where uh, things are actually occurring if they see something at the Weather Bureau that looks like it might be a tornado. And we have somebody locally they can confirm, yes, it looks like it's really a tornado. That really helps. Um, Mr. Green, can I just jump in here for a second? Yes. Um, I think. Uh, this board is generally in favor of your events. Uh -huh. um, the only concern I had was regarding the generators that you were planning on using. Now, you and I have discussed it. You said okay. quiet. But now, there's uh, Honda and Generac will we'll have two small generators that generate uh, 61 decibels, which is probably less than my talking uh, of noise. Uh, and we can, uh, if, if it becomes a problem, we can shut down and operate from battery power. It's a little, a little bit less convenient, but we can do that if, if the neighbors, there's neighbors about, what, 200 feet away or so? If, if, if they would uh, have complaints, we could uh, do that. But we've operated in similar situations near a, uh, at a school, in the Rockford School District the last two years with with people that close and we've never had a problem. Okay. So Mr. Green? 
Yes. Uh, will you be setting up antennas? Yes. How tall will they be? Uh, about 40 feet. Yeah. There's one guy that sets up there now. There's what? There's a fellow that sets up there now. Well, I yeah. sat up there on on, uh, on All Fool's Day, April 1, because that started the the Michigan State Parks on the Air is celebrating with the uh, State Park, I guess it's part of the Department of Natural Resources, their 100th anniversary starting <coughs> this year, running through 2019. And I've gone up there and set up a 31-foot pole, and I've, I've operated from there. And in the past year, it was the National Parks on the Air, where I'd go down to different parts of, of the White Pine Trail, where it was part of the North Country Trail, and uh, I set up and operate there. It's something that's really fun to do, and you, you contact people all across the uh, United States and uh, other parts of the world. Thank you. Yeah, I walked through there later on in the day, and you wouldn't even know anybody had been there. It was kind of neat. I wanted to talk to them, but you had already left. Oh, okay. So for those following along at home, can you just state where it will be? And it, oh, this will be at the staging area for the White Pine Trail. Okay. And it is, uh, you know, I guess you all know, the, the, the major landmark we're telling people about is go west from Cedar Springs uh, Brewing Company and run into the trail there, and that's where we'll be. And you'll be there on what day at what time? In January, or June 24th, from, we'll be setting up at 9 a.m., and the operation will start at 2 p.m., and we'll operate through the evening and the night, and to the next day at 2 p.m., and then we'll start tearing down. Sounds great. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Mr. Green. Okay. Thank, Thank you for your time. Any other concerns or comments on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is any further discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing on a roll call vote. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mrs. Conley. Yes. Mr. Groves. Yes. Mr. Hopkins. Yes. Mrs. Nixon. Yes. Mrs. Powell. Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Motion carried. Moving on to item seven, discussion item. <coughs> Mr. Holmanx. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, at our last meeting, we did discuss uh, the possibility of potentially putting the humane pet acquisition ordinance on the ballot. Um, Ms. Newland did speak with Susan Decider, who's the Kent County Election Coordinator, uh, who's very well versed in Michigan election law and indicated to us that that was not possible, not legal to do. Um, I did do some research into our own charter, and there is a, a provision in the charter that allows referendary uh, petitions, but that has to be started by uh, a member of the public and not by us. So, if we wanted to have a public vote, we'd have to have a citizen bring it to us, uh, gather a certain number of uh, signatures, and there are specific provisions that I've given to you guys uh, in the charter regarding that but it's not possible to do it through the, uh, otherwise do it through the election process. Okay. Um, also, uh, during our last meeting, it was suggested that I bring a draft ordinance to allow chickens uh, into the city of Cedar <coughs> Uh I wrote it, and I wrote it for chickens and ducks, because I've heard that people eat duck eggs as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I present to you the draft ordinance. Um, and it is an uh, amalgamation between the Grand Rapids and Roseville city ordinances that allow the same. Um, well, I guess I'm ambivalent regarding it. Um, it, it will create a, a number of issues for the city, um, and this is a quick way to get neighbors not liking neighbors. Um, Mr. Hopkins and I did discuss this matter uh, regarding the planning commission being the authority that would take the vote on this. Um, and the reason that was added into it is because there is case law um, that indicates you cannot allow a neighbor to have a veto power over whether their neighbor has a chicken in their backyard. And so what I need is for a essentially a public hearing um, for a body.
body to hear uh, the petition um, and then make a decision about whether that would be permitted with all the circumstances being considered. Um, so that's the way uh, it was written for the Planning Commission, and I'm open to any thoughts or comments you guys have about it. Mr. Mayor? Sure. Yeah. Did you get any feedback from any community about the success, how much extra monitoring had to be done? Sure, I did. I did contact um, the City of Green Rapids. Uh, they indicated to me that they did, in the very beginning, have a number of issues because they were having um, the issue I just spoke about, the veto power from the neighbors. Now, as you've read, uh, what we would do is we'd contact all the neighbors, have them list their, you know, uh, thoughts on whether their neighbors can have chickens. Um, and if they're against it, that will be considered. Um, what Grand Rapids was originally doing is if anybody complained, they just said no. Well, under again, case law, you can't do that. Uh, so what we would do if this were to be passed is those thoughts would be passed along to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission would weigh those and then make a determination based on the totality of the circumstances. Um, but after Grand Rapids instituted a change in their policy to weigh it in that way, they said they've had very few problems. I have one comment on it, if I could. I would just soon see ducks taken from it. Ducks are noisier than chickens. A uh, quack of the duck will carry much farther than a pluck of the chicken. Okay. Uh, I understand the reason for roosters, only I think we're being sexually biased. Uh, uh, but I understand the situation with a rooster, and that's one of the reasons we're not a rooster, simply because of the noise. Uh, the chicken or a hen, obviously, uh, the chicken is much quieter. Uh, so, sorry, hen, but uh, rather than a rooster. But I'd like to see the ducks left out of it. I, I think the numbers of persons that are going to be interested in having duck eggs is going to be much, much less than those who are I just think we complicated by adding them in also. Sure, and I did have that thought in drafting it, but I wanted to present options. <coughs> Nothing else on the chickens? I have just a math question because I'm going to blind. How much of an acre is 3,800 square feet? How many? Uh, How much of an acre is 3,800 square feet? 43,560 square foot is an acre. Thank you for that. He's right on the house wall there. I do. I'm not only a calculator. I have to figure it out with my job all the time. So, um, please, I need a calculator. Yeah, no, like most of the owners are in this and most uh, lots in the city would be permitted to have chickens. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's what we were trying to figure out, I think. Yep. Yeah. Does it, does, it, does, it fit, does it fit a lot? Yes. Uh, it, would most people fall under this? Yes. Because, yeah, it would be kind of silly if we made it and then said that no one's lot is big enough. Most of your lots, your standard lots, are 6'6", six, six, by 132. Is that what they are? Most of your lots. Okay. Unless some of them you have double lots or a lot and a half. Okay. Because, yeah, I was going to say mine is different. Your double lot. Oh, good to know. May I stop? Are you next to everybody? Mayor. Perhaps Mr. Green would like to leave since we already reviewed his application. Well, I, I thought about it, but it's interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to stay. We're not going to you up. <laughs> on, on the chickens, uh, I did talk to another city manager about it, and they just allowed them to have it, but free ranging, and then they had to rewrite their ordinances because it was because it caused a real nuisance. The neighbors really got upset. Uh, and then they were, some of them get hit by cars. And oh! So they had to rewrite it. And by doing that, they caused a lot more problems for themselves than if they would have had a originally written not to allow free range. Yeah, I don't think they want free range. Mm -hmm. I have no, no, no fly in the transformer, and then nobody will have power for about two days. I have this chicken before they find it at home. <laughs> You put a rescue well, chicken. a filthy mess. Yeah. I, what, I would rather pay a dollar for an egg than take care of six chickens every day. <laughs> it, it was awful. But then you have 
thing you don't have your own farm raised eggs. Yeah, I don't have all that chicken food at home. <laughs> they, they, are, they are that. There's, there's some sanitation issues with it. So if I could follow up on all this discussion, <laughs> I tend to agree they tend to be dirty animals, which is why there's a significant portion of the ordinance that talks about keeping things clean. Yes. But as you can imagine, our code enforcement officer has other things he can do with his time as well. Um, and like I said before, this is one of those issues that can pit neighbor against neighbor. Um, not only the plucking versus quacking, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, I was speaking with somebody today about um, the very same issue. And you know, if, if your dog attacks somebody, mm -hmm. uh, somebody's chickens, now, that's a whole separate issue. So. I have an old cat that's pretty dirty. I'm generally not in favor of it, uh, but I think it's a lot of you go to the option. So I can uh, uh, take into consideration any comments you guys want, um, and I can bring it back for eventual passage if you want. Mr. Mayor, if I... Okay. Um, I was just going to say, I think you've done a really nice job with the scope and the language, and I appreciate it. I've had quite... I don't know if anybody else has. I've had quite a few people ask me about it. It's apparently a thing. Um, I don't particularly want chicken, but I'm not opposed to other people having chicken. I will also point out that this does have a two-year automatic sunset provision, mm -hmm. so that at the end of two years, this body this would have to renew it. I, so it could be a trial period. I kind two. of like the, um, this process that you have to want it enough to like, fill out this application. We aren't making, I mean, did I read this correctly? Yes. Yeah, but it's an application. It's not just yeah. a... Like, we've made this ordinance. Like, I don't have to have an application for my cat. Where these people would have to actually fill out an application. And I, the requirement. I think that thing, you know, if this is something that's important to you, here's a vehicle for you to exercise that right as a homeowner while protecting your neighbors and ensuring that you're going to provide the appropriate restrictions of structure and cleanliness and so on. If I could ask just a scroll poll though before I bring it back next time. Sure. Um, how does everybody feel about the duck uh, question? I'm ambivalent. I'm ambivalent about ducks. If it, I've never had experience with ducks, so I follow to Mr. Gross is He's right opinion. now. He's right. Uh, Mr. Gross is right there. Wow. I agree. So I will bring it back uh, without the ducks and you guys can I guess do a first reading on it. I'm going to stop while I'm chicken. If you need it, I guess. So, like, if they have to be somebody that's for 4-H or FFA that's having a special, like, one duck, not a bunch of them, they still quack. <laughs> chicken still alive. <laughs> Chicken's still alive. Chicken 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 still alive. Another question I was having is, like, on the fence size. Uh, it just says, not more than 10 feet or 10 feet to the property line. Is there any other restriction on the size of the fence? Like if somebody wanted to fence in their entire property up to the 10 feet to the thing? I think the odor and sanitation conditions, we don't want them up for the Well, I am just asking. Mm -hmm. I would because it doesn't stay in here. Yeah. Um, so if you want me to put additional details as to maximum size, because I think there is a maximum size for the one. You give them the maximum size for the one. There's also the maximum coop size and then the maximum so forth. Size. They didn't, not sorry, there was a pen size and so forth mm -hmm. attached to the coop, I think it was. Yes. Uh, so there was a restriction on the size there, but it was based on the coop, I think. Okay. You're only allowing six chickens, so that's in the bakery for room for them. Well, Somebody's going to want to just let them pick through and kill all the ants in the yard, but it's not going to be any good for the neighbor's property value. There it is. That's why we want to set back from that. Well, that's right. There's no, doesn't, I don't see a limitation other than, other than 10, 10 feet. feet from the property line. So, so it's seen. You may want to say something like not more than X amount of percent of the yard. I also don't know how I'm going to measure the size of the yard. Yeah, I don't that know that becomes, you can. That becomes very cumbersome as far as. But I, I will look into it and yeah. see if what's a reasonable thing, and I'll bring it back to you guys. And if they have to pay for the fencing, if you put up fencing, I mean, I have a fenced in backyard. Fencing is expensive. It is. Well, and I'm not sure if people would want a fence because we also have uh, explicit uh, anti chicken wire language in our fence ordinance. Right. So this would almost certainly have to be a coup. 
But I say if the issue is that like someone fenced in their entire yard so that they're chicken. That's what I that's what I'm saying. You know, I guess I don't want to spend a lot of time on this if it's gonna go nowhere. I I don't see it going nowhere. Well, I mean, for the manager to commit more Would time. Would you like a stop poll, Mr. Mayor, on how many of us are in favor of chicken? Can I ask a question? Can I pose one more question before we do that? Sure. Hi. Hi. Mr. Goldman, are we trying to say we're going to have a two year trial as an ordinance, or that when a person takes out the application, it's only good for two years? Um, the way it's written right now, if you pass the ordinance, it would then be good for two years from the effective date of the ordinance, not from when the person gets the application. So okay. since, the planning, since the planning commission only meets once a month, the first time they'd be able to get it would be one month from now, meaning they'd have one year and 11 months to have chickens. Now that's, of course, you can renew it at the end of two years if there's no problems. It's in, in item six. So. We are saying that at the end of two years, we're going to evaluate whether we want to continue this ordinance. Correct. Yes. I would guess I would prefer to have it just be one year. So, then if we do it. Well, I have additional questions in my comment on that. Go ahead. Right. Well, I'll go with the comment first. Is that, first of all, when you get baby chicks, they don't lay for like eight months. Right. That, that's A. So, one year is impractical. And then my other question is, I see in here two things. Um, one, which I'm not necessarily opposed, but I think that we should make the general public via YouTube aware of, um, is that it doesn't permit the slaughtering of any animals on property, which I, I don't want to walk out and see that, so I'm okay with that. Um, and I also see that there's no sale of eggs. So if they couldn't take them to like the farmer's market or somewhere else, or is this specifically referring to they can't sell them out of their front yard? This is a common provision that I've seen in a number of other uh, chicken ordinances, which okay. is why I added to this one. Okay. Um, and of course, there are no reasons behind that. Um, you, know, you guys are the policy makers. Okay. If you wanted to change it, you could, but I will tell you that there are reasons why you shouldn't permit that. Okay. So maybe it's a health. Department, yeah, probably. Yeah. All of the above. Okay. You know, there's a, there's a lot of restrictions in here that if a person does raise these chickens, <coughs> he's put a lot of time and effort and information gathering in to cover us extensively, and I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it as is, and we'll take out the ducks. I, I don't know if so we were going to pick it all apart tonight, but I mean, there's other things too. It, it talks about making it uh, vermin free, keeping mice and rats out of it. It says right in there. I'm just saying, you're saying that that's what you're going to do and you're going to prevent. I'll guarantee you, you won't prevent it. <laughs> Which is why you're, nice. you're going to be feeding them grain and so forth. It's going to be on for mice, rats get in through holes they'll never suspect. Yep. And this is one of the reasons I'm not totally in favor of it because this is going to cause a lot of issues for the city, the neighbors, and the code enforcer. How much tighter can you make at that? I don't, I don't know that you can. And you said that Grand Rapids said they're not having a problem? No. There's very few problems, I think. Okay. Well, so. I have a friend in Portland that has chickens and, like, for subdivision. And not a problem. Okay. It's been very elaborate little chicken houses. There are. <laughs> Any other discussion before we, uh, you know, Would you like to stop for Mr. Mayor? Yeah, who is in favor of this to continue on with it, or do we scrap it? I'm in favor.
a dozen people to have chickens in their backyards, do we create a rule and a law that allows them to have it when all the rest of the city or the majority of the city would not want it? So uh, I'm not for it, especially with the ducks. You can take the ducks. Well, that's the way you have to have a public hearing before the okay. permit. I'm not all in favor of it either, so there's four that say no. So the chickens died. Okay. That's oh. cool. Thank you for your time and effort. And of course, yeah. 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 And now the next sentence. I seem to be the person that fields those questions. I don't know. Maybe I look like a person who would have chickens. <laughs> I don't have chickens, but <laughs> All right. if this passed, I wouldn't go. But I don't see the new fire barn building. This is where the meeting gets fun, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, here we go. Like, um, Chief Ranger and, and the Fire Barn Relocation Committee have been working hard. Chief Fraser has your, what is he, your off, uh, chief or captain or, anyway. We, uh, we, were, we were challenged by the city manager to come up with the meeting spot and what we thought would be This is what we come up with. Woohoo! This would be where the library parking lot or the library is now. Right here. This would be the meeting room. Number By two. library, you mean the current library? The current library would be torn down and made parking lot. There, we have talked about several tweaks about maybe instead of bringing it in off of. Now, on 2nd Street, we bring it in off the Cherry, or maybe both, because we realize that undoubtedly the parking lot is going to get used. There's an apron already there off the of Cherry Street, so it's well, like, this, I don't want to say this, this is 2nd Street, Can you not turn right north hand? and south, <laughs> this is Cherry Street. This would be Second Street, so we would have our apron here dumping north onto Elm Street. That way, um, eventually I understand that that white apartment building will be a parking lot in the future, and there would be no residents over here like there is now with the Michigan Valley and the four houses um, on that west side of Second Street. These, this would be a meeting room, um, a lobby, offices would be up here, and, and the, the thing that really gets me excited, this number 13 right here, for those that um, can see that, this is two renderings that we have. Number 13 would be yeah, last in yeah. area for the Mile A. Yeah. Oh, and okay. the access door here. Your, yeah. office, your offices would be just getting a handle from that, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. the right way. Um, that's where yeah. Mr. Yeah. Treasurer yeah. would come in to help us get some grants. Yeah. So, yeah. This this yeah. would be the host tower here. And there was some talk about putting some Last in there looked like a red beacon with like Cedar Springs fire department on. Chief, that doesn't eat up too much of your space that you no. need for other vehicles. No. This, this was designed, and I'm not real good at this, so you'll have to bear with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. it's I'm fine. not a or ran away. So what they did is that fits on the existing city property at the old community mm -hmm. building site. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. This, this fits into right, that right. lot that's available, provided we use the old library for parking. Now, does the parking lot not come all the way up to the edge of the building, or? Well, it's designed not to know there's a little green space in there. Okay. Um, however, there's just been about talk about there. moving maybe a couple of these parking spots here so that we can come in and have a drive through base. Oh. That was my... That was my question. We're kicking that around, yeah. Okay. This, this spot to the 
east of the building, between the alley, the business owners are here, and that alley that runs between there would be for future expansion, would be another two bays. Mm -hmm. So we would have, actually, we would have four double bases. Yeah. Right. And right how now. many vehicles do we have right now? We have seven. Okay, and that includes the the truck that rest. The trailer and the model A and everything. everything. Okay. Well, that good in there. Not so much the trailer, but the model A. The model A would set right up in here with glass and everything, so everybody can uh, feel it. Uh, see so it. Well, it puts it on display where everyone can see it. It needs so, to be on display, but if it didn't fit in here, we could we find we would find a place. Okay. Like I said, it kind of got excited. This is this is looking um, from Main Street to the southwest. Looking down the street. Right? This is the business. Uh, how many? Gifford right here right now. Um, you'd have your bays here with the model A here, and like I said, we'd have a light up there and kind of signify that that would distract from the home tower. We understand that there's going to be some tweaks to this. But everything that we need is incorporated into it. Like I said, this would be the this would be the hot leg this guy right here. We talked about maybe making an arch like the old fashioned uh, oh, yeah. doors. Ooh. You know, you can do that with with your uh, brickwork and stuff. The only drawback is that Mr. Mr. Wolf cost a little bit when we told him they all cost an estimated price. Are you gonna guess one point two? No. Way more. Way more? So let's let's stop there for a second and see if anyone <laughs> has questions regarding the renderings and then we'll get into cost and price. The only one I'm glad to see Mari will be able to stay in his home. I do that is do you have, have the shortest commute to work of anybody ever. I do have some questions no. for the team. I'm sure. Go ahead, <laughs> okay. Mr. Rose. Uh, Nowhere do I see there's a entrance door off the back of the building. Yep, that was that means Marty's got to run clear around to the side of the building. <laughs> and I uh, think there may be a need for a automated walkway that just transports them all over the discussing in the building that uh, to put the doors actually in that back, they thought it would be less money to put the doors in than it would be to build the building <coughs> for future. So that, there's a lot of things that are going to be tweaked on the building, in, in particular, you know, for Chief, for his physical fitness, we wanted to have him run around the building. That, that, is, that was a just part of it. So. I think we need a zip line. Okay. You should just go from the second floor of your house. If I can, I should point out that this is simply an artist rendering. This yes. is not set in stone, but I thought it was a great uh, first step that in showing council what's going on. So, price tag. So, that's where we get into the difficulty of all of this. Uh, Mr. Frazier, would you like to tell us how much the original estimate was? We, I didn't, Marty. We sat down there to meeting, and uh, Jeff Gus was in there, and uh, he put out that on the low side it would be $140 a square foot, and on the high side it would be 175 which brings us up to a million seven. Okay. Now, that being said, it's my understanding that because we're in a bubble right now, that construction costs are high, and in three to five years, you know, it's very possible that this would go down. And of course, I'm hoping to get this process moving in one to three. So, how much to level? Time. Does that include the cost of getting rid of the current building? Just the building. Yeah, it does not include the parking lot either. I don't think. Um, that's going to be another. Yeah, that might end up being. Um, they had talked that. Uh, to demo the, the old library and then maybe gravel it for now until the monies become available to pave it. Uh, there was a lot of discussion back and forth, right, Chief? There was a lot of discussion back and forth on what to 
So you could put gravel in that lot for the temporary, mainly, or leave the library up for a short time. And it was, it's all over the place, so it, there's nothing set in stone. Okay. You, you could get a quote today on that building with the parking lot and demolition of the old library, and I'll guarantee you next month it will change. I, I believe you. I'm just trying to get a feel for what we're talking about. Well, first thing, and that's where our wonderful treasure will come into play. Uh, before we get to Ms. Falcon, the evil city manager will help uh, pair this down, I think, and try to get the cost a little bit better under control, uh, which kind of takes me to page 86 of your packet. Um, and I just did some napkin math that uh, Ms. Falcon assures me is not totally crazy. Um, I wanted to put in front of council just kind of my thoughts on how much there is a difference between $1 million and $2 million. And if you look at the numbers I have written here, well, let's see, a $1 million loan over a 10-year period is paying back $1.3 million. And, of course, doubling that, you're paying $2.6 for $2 million, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, uh, let's see, a one mill property raises approximately $75,000 in the city. So we would need two mills over 10 years to basically pay back a $1 million up Front That's a lot of money. Can we go longer than 10 years? And these are obviously all things we're going to have to look at. No, but legally, can we? I don't know. Like, what's what's the maximum amount of time? Something we, we did. Have plenty of time. Yeah, okay. we didn't do the research on because I just wanted to show you what it would take to get a $1 million building. But I think we did the, on the, Jerry, you would know, on the water treatment plant, that, well, that was, was 20. That was through different mechanism farmers. Yeah, that, that, that's being paid back in a different way. Yeah. Um, so there's a number of options we can look at, but I just want to temper the enthusiasm a little bit um, and, and make us really realize this money does not grow on trees. This is a very serious decision we've got to make. Of um, And I'll leave it at that. This, these renderings are going to appear at the community night and also at the library grand opening as part of uh, the city's uh, goal to get the citizens involved with my sticker campaign. Did you stick a boot out? Some of you have heard about. <laughs> and so. Uh, stick a fire boot out? Yeah, I think we're going to need to have a few more uh, uh, big man. boy meetings, right? A lot of yeah. <laughs> well, that's I just put say fireman's balls in order. So that's the big issue is uh, mainly the funding mechanism, and I'm sure between the next two years before we break ground with the city, we would have that in place. So, a lot more work involved, just so everyone knows there's going to be some pain. Well, thank you for that math and math there. Mike, it really cleared a lot of that. <coughs> so, if you guys will permit, I'll just move on. Mm -hmm. um, so, as you know, library director, uh, previously 